<sighs> Don't be shy. Uncle Josh is here. I see your underpants. 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 Your underpants. Oh no! one of it is my number one most favorite number here's today's card it's tradition around here to show you the card but it's not tradition to show you what's on the card but you'll find out anyway because we'll talk about it uh 94 why do i love 94 well i was born in the year 94 i was born in 1994 uh that's a that's a song from a video i made and I never uploaded it. Maybe we'll watch it on here someday. Maybe today. No, not today. Not today. Oh, today would be a good day to watch it, though. I made... Okay, so if you guys know this YouTuber, his name... He goes by the name of Nakey Jakey. Fantastic content. The guy does... Uh, he only does... Not only. But he does, like... Uh, what do you call it? I don't know the term of the style of video that he does, but he talks about video games. God, what is the style? Can we just look him up? Let's look up Naked Jacob. Naked Jacob. I just want to show you real quick. Naked Jakey. Naked Jacob. Do I really got to show this? Here he is. Nah, get out of here. It's kind of loud, isn't it? He sits on a ball. <laughs> essay style video. That's what it is. Like essay style videos. He creates an essay about a topic, specifically, more specifically about video games. And he talks about it, you know, like a specific detail or aspect of the video game that he likes. But he does a very, very good job of it. A very good job. Um, uh, what's what's his name? Uh, Eddie Burback does the same sort of thing. They're both friends. The essay, Oliver, quit it. The essay style videos, I just, I love them. I love it when they're well done. Oliver, I said stop. Hey, hey, lay down. You lay down. He's licking his balls. He's still licking him. He's just not listening to me. Oliver, would you stop? I said stop it. Just lay down. There you go. So I I decided at one point, I think it was even during COVID, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do my own essay style video. And I made the essay style video about Nakey, Nakey Jakey and why I liked him so much. And I made the video in the style of his format, and it took me a while to do. It took me a, it took me like, it took me a long time, not as long as he not. I didn't put as much effort as he did in his videos, uh, but when I I edited it all, I I filmed it, I recorded it, and uh, obviously, and then when I watched it back, I was like, this sucks. This is horribly made. The the topic of discussion in the form of the essay just didn't work. It was, I just, I watched it over and over again. And, and, and even to this day, I go back and watch it every now and then. And I'm like, God, this, it's just not, it's not what I expected it to be. So I never uploaded it. And I, uh, 
I feel like I should just play it right now so we should watch we could watch it. I'm hyping it up so much. But I don't know, man. I don't want to I just I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to right now. Maybe next episode we'll watch it. But cuz this episode I already got it planned out with stuff I want to do. Um let me see if I can find something here. <laughs> okay. I'm still contemplating. Should I do it? Should I not do it? Nah, we ain't going to do it. Um, last episode, I watched it back and I realized with this fucking microphone, I spent all this money on this fucking mic arm. And uh, the problem is, it's not the mic arm that's the problem. It's the microphone, this microphone. I don't know if it's just the style of microphone or what. I'm not using it right now. I'm using this Yeti again. But this microphone, when I plug it into my audio interface, I have to turn the, uh, the dial all the way. It has to be cranked all the way or else it doesn't work. If, I, if it's not all the way, there's no audio that comes through. But if I crank it all the way, then it works. But the problem is, now I'm fucking, uh, I'm clipping the audio constantly. Because it's cranked to its maximum capacity. So I don't know if, I've got two audio interfaces. I tried them both, it does the same for both. So I don't know if this microphone's just a piece of trash or I'm doing something wrong. And so what I noticed last episode, Oliver, go lay down. Last episode, you can like hear my obnoxious gargling breathing the whole time. And it annoys the shit out of me. Because I'm like kind of a mouth breather as is. And this has been an issue for me almost my whole life. Because I've always been recording myself since I was a child. And I've always noticed my breath. No matter what. Even if I'm just recording a video on my phone, you can hear me breathing. And it annoys the piss out of me. But last episode, you can really fucking notice it. So I'm like, I got to mitigate that issue. So, so if you were annoyed by last episode of my breathing, just know that I am aware of it and I don't like it either. So this episode, I prepared in advance and I'm like, I'm going to use the Blue Yeti. I'm going to turn the gain down so that you don't hear my breathing at all. And if you do, it's just barely noticeable. Uh, so yeah, that's what I did. Remember, we can only play a few seconds of that. You guys got any <laughs> bags of bird ham in here? <laughs> we ran out bird of bird ham. ham. Um, shoot, I don't, before we jump into a video here, I want to, uh, I want to talk about uh, my stream. I started streaming God of War. I'm only two episodes in, which means I'm still early in the game. And so far, I'm kind of enjoying it, but not. I'm not like invested in it yet. And I'm sure I will be, but there's a lot to that game. There's a lot of intricacies and upgrades and shit, you know? Which I will get the hang of, but what I notice is when you stream a game fresh without knowing anything about it and you dedicate yourself to streaming a game without having any prior knowledge of the game, you're learning as it's recording or as it's streaming. And so the issue with that is, is you can't take the time to process what's happening because you're trying to entertain the audience at the same time. Uh, so maybe I just got to get past that whole dilemma of trying to entertain the audience the whole time and focus on the game and just simply play it as I normally would instead of trying to constantly entertain. It's a dilemma. It's a dilemma I've always had. It's like when the camera's on, you want to keep people's attention. You don't want them to, to blather off. Blathers. I love blathers. I love Animal Crossing. Also a game that I got back into recently. And I'm, I'm, 
Might be getting back into The Sims. I don't fucking know. But either way, streaming is kind of fun. It is fun. Um, but I'm still getting used to it. I also still don't know how to fucking stream higher than 720p. My settings are, are maxed out on OBS, but for some reason, when it uploads to YouTube, it's still only 720p. What's up with that? I don't know what's going on. And I don't really care. Jackpot. You know? Jackpot. Something I don't want to be more like. Whoops. Uh oh. No, 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 no. Okay. I thought my stream deck was going to freeze again. You know, we can't have that. Okay. Fresh computer, fresh deck. We don't need no skin. We don't need no. We don't need no skin. We don't. Shut up, dude. You don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. You want way too many naps. Shut your fucking mouth. You'll do nothing. You'll, you'll do, do fucking, fucking nothing. Not one of you will do nothing. Get, Get the, the fuck, fuck out, out of here. here. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, and then also last episode, I, uh, it was my first time using like OBS to record audio, uh, as well. So the audio was pretty trash whenever I'd play a video and talk at the same time. It was recording the audio from the laptop mic, as well as this mic, plus it was recording the computer audio. So I couldn't separate the, the laptop mic audio from the computer audio. So every time I would talk, there would be all that jumbled into one. So that was a mess. So hopefully this episode is better. 194, it's my favorite number. Not one, but 94. Which I'm, I'm sure I mentioned on episode 94 of the Dynamite Gizmo podcast that 94 was my favorite number. Oliver, where are you going? Go lay down. Don't try and sneak away. He does this thing where he, <laughs> whenever I'm podcasting, or even if I'm not podcasting, he'll try to sneak away and go sit by the door in the sunlight because the sun's, sun's shining now. But I don't like him sitting by the door because it's right next to the neighbor's door. And if he hears the neighbors, he'll start borking because he's a little borky boy. Isn't that right, Oliver? You're a little bork. Okay, let's let's uh, let's start off fresh with something. Let's start off with a Martin. Okay, Martin's back at it again with a gun to Kermit's head. Uh, let's see what he's got to say. I might have to refresh this. I'm going to have to. I shut the computer down, and when you do that, you gotta refresh. Don't ask me why. I don't make the rules. All right, Kermit. While I'm holding you hostage, today's topic: evolution. And another missing link. Okay. Waterman or Aquaman can show you Aquaman or a real life merman or mereman, a raw flat huh? son of the first hue in the shape of a man they call Isra Elohim, the invisible creator. What's he talking about? That gave microorganisms the digital correction to create a man See, yeah, this... in its image. What? Without that information your country or collegiate institutions are left behind when it comes to studying evolution and where humanity came from. Slow-mo. What's with the slow motion at the end? Bro, what? Okay. <laughs> okay, Martin's either completely insane or like I said, he's actually talking about legit stuff but he's using these code words you can't figure out what the fuck he's talking about yes martin they all said in unison like maybe he's actually legit talking about something but we're just not seeing the underline of what it is that he's talking about because he he makes it too fucking cryptic like what the fuck are you talking about martin you got a gun to Kermit's head? <laughs> Let me just watch the rest of it. Is it just Tim crunching chips? See, because <laughs> cause when you throw that in at the end, him just crunching on some chips, it's like, well, maybe he is just saying nonsense. Just trying to be funny. He's just playing into this character. 
I don't know, man. If you know more about Martin than I do, then tell me. Because I would love to know. Hi, Yeti. It's nice to have you back. Hi, Dynamite. It's nice to have you back. Today's topic, while I point this gun at Dynamite's head. Okay, guys, let's do some dancing. Let's, let's show, show me my, my moves. moves. I don't have a... Uh, I don't have a beverage in the White Sneakers Award mug. Forgot. It's a Monday morning. It's a Monday morning. Not a typical time for me to record podcasts, but uh, I needed to squeeze it in. And today is the perfect day to squeeze it in. And also, season two of Vance Canada's... Uh, ta, 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 what is it called? Antopia? I don't remember. Just check out Ants Canada, okay? He has a fucking fantastic series. A fantastic series, which I already mentioned about a terrarium. A self-sustaining terrarium. It's a thousand gallon fucking terrarium. And it's just, it's so fucking cool, dude. He's great at making videos. He's a little bit cheesy and overdramatic, but they're just so addicting. I highly recommend you go check out Ants Canada right now uh, but as for me I am going to do an autism test today's topic autism uh, discover your autism quotient with our self-assessment quiz let's get started I need to find out if I am autistic which I come on I mean I gotta be right uh, so let's get started the only thing I don't like about this is the amount of ads I'm seeing all over the fucking screen. Can we not just do something without the ads? Okay, let me see. I like doing things alone. Uh, sometimes I guess I enjoy a small group of friends. Can I choose multiple answers? I don't know. Because I'm not totally extroverted. I don't love being with people. People are sometimes too much. I wouldn't say I'm definitely a loner. I do enjoy a small group of friends. I'm going to do that one. Okay. I guess you can't do multiple. Okay, so let's next one. It's hard for me to change how I do things. Yeah. Well, it used to be, but not so much. Sometimes it stress it does stress me out. Hmm. Yeah, not if presented with a better technique. Sometimes it's hard to change. Well, see, that this is tough, dude. If I'm presented with a better technique, but even if I am, it's still hard for me to change. I wouldn't say I like to change it up. Iteration is life. But here's the other thing. When people like Jordan Peterson talk about change and say iteration is life, I don't even know what iteration means. I agree with that statement. But it still stresses me out to do change. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do, you know, genuine answers, which is you know, what 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 are we what are we doing here? We're supposed to do. I can picture my imaginations easily. Absolutely. Uh, I well, these are weird answers. Oh, totally. I love doing that. Or that's the best part of creativity. Um. I guess this one, I don't know. That's the best part of creativity. Look at this guy. What are you looking at? I get so focused that I forget other things I should do. Now that I can do. The hyper fixation on things. Uh, yes, I do. Like when it's, when it's actually time to focus on something. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds bother me more than they do others. Now see, <laughs> I, they do. Uh, yes, most of the time they do. And it depends on the sound. Like actually, Rick Glassman posted a video the other day on TikTok and probably Instagram too, I don't know. But uh, about people who chew with their mouth open. All right, just like, just like that fucking breathing I was talking about. Listening to my breathing, that bugs the fucking shit out of me 
it drives me fucking crazy, dude. Or like people who chew loud. And then you address it. Like Rick Glassman said, you address it. You say, hey, can you stop it? It's fucking annoying. They address it for a second, but then they go right back to it because they're just not aware. It Because it doesn't compute to them. They just, you know. But then you look at other cultures and it's like mouth slapping, burping, slurping is just part of eating, which I also understand because it's like, why is that such a big issue? Why does it, who cares if you're slurping and slapping your lips? But for me or Rick Glassman, it bugs the shit out of me. I hate it. But then when you look at it practically, if you're eating like a hot soup, <laughs> or noodles, you know, and they're hot, you slurp them because it rapidly cools it. It's cooling it as it's going into your mouth. But it's so annoying to listen to. Like, do animals have autism? If they hear slurping, slapping noises, are they going to be triggered? And I also, I don't like the word trigger. I will never use that to represent who I am or the feelings I have. I don't like that fucking word. I think it's a cop-out. It's a cop-out, and it's just fucking, it's just pussy shit. Oh, I'm triggered. Fuck off. You want to get triggered? I'll put fucking Martin's gun to your head and pull it. Anyway. But with that being said, uh, sounds bother me more than others do. Most of the time they do. Yes. I remember random facts and numbers. Absolutely. That is very easy for me. My brain is a throne of random. Uh, so that's the answer. Do you understand jokes or sarcasm? I do. See, that's the difference. Is I do. I absolutely do. Always. Always, always, always. Comedy is a huge part of my life. I love comedy. I love comedians. I mean, that's that's what my whole life revolves around is comedy. I don't watch TV. I don't watch movies. I've went over this a thousand times, I'm sure. But you could name a popular movie or TV show. I more than likely have not seen it. Star Wars, Indiana Jones, any Disney movie other than maybe Toy Story, um... Harry Potter, uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones. I haven't seen any of that shit because I only watch podcasts, specifically comedy podcasts, stand-up comedy podcasts. Ever since 2016, ever since I discovered Joe Rogan, and I don't give a fuck what you think about Joe Rogan, all right? He's fucking awesome, and he created this universal platform for everyone specifically comedians to just create a podcast and elevate stand-up comedy to like an extreme level podcasts help stand-up comedy so much and not only that but his podcast wasn't specifically focused on comedy he brings in all kinds of people so that accentuated the fact that anyone can have a podcast I don't know if you remember, but when when Rogan started his podcast, he was he that was he would always be like you need to st-, he, his guests he would say you need to start a podcast, start a podcast, start. A-. He was telling everyone to start a podcast. That was back when like no one was really doing it, and it wasn't really, you know, a mainstream thing. And now every fucking person has a podcast. Everybody has one, which is good and bad, uh, but like anything. If it's actually worth watching or worth producing, eventually it's going to excel so much that everyone's going to do it and then it's going to become mainstream and then that's when people start to hate it again. But I will always love them as long as they stay, you know, they're going to evolve, obviously, just like everything, but I will always love podcasts. I Well, actually, I can't say that. From 2016 to now, podcasts are my life. And and so back to this. Do I understand jokes, sarcasm? Absolutely. Because I love it. It's my life. It's everything. So always. I can picture characters as I read. Yeah, easily. Absolutely. 
uh, I cast every single character. What does that mean? I can do this. Yes, it's the best part. Uh, I don't know. See, like three of these answers are like the same answer. I wouldn't say it's the best part, but I would say I can do this. But it also says yes. I cast every. Ah, I'll just say yes. It's the best part. I'm obsessed with my calendar. Uh, poof. Yeah, essentially. Not so much the calendar. Because I don't use the calendar, but I use like a to-do list that I schedule. I'll be like, here's my to-do list. I need to do this this day, and I'll set reminders. So I guess that's the same idea. Uh, so I would say uh, my calendar is life. I would never say that, but the message is the same. So we'll do that. How do you feel about social gatherings? Well, here we go. So it depends, I guess. I wouldn't say I'm avoidant of them. I do like them. Uh, but I, I, I prefer my own space uh, most of the time. I do like going to them, though. So I'm not always excited. Maybe slightly hesitant. I wouldn't say mostly avoidant. I wouldn't say always avoid. Usually enjoy them. Slightly hesitant. Usually enjoy them. I would say usually enjoy them. That's what I'll go with. I like to hang out in groups. Now here we go. I guess it's de it depends though. I don't like group hangs. That's out. I have regular groups. I have a regular group for sure. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't say yes, it's so much fun. It doesn't stress me out. Most of the time I'm down. Most of the time I'm down. That is actually what I would say. Most of the time I'm down. Uh, how do you re react to unexpected plan changes? Now this, I don't really like. This, I don't like. A bit disappointed, but fine. See, like back in the my early 20s, it was like, I'd be quite upset. I'd feel a bit anxious. I'd say I feel a bit anxious now. A bit anxious. Or me, ah, a bit disappointed, but fine. Uh, I mean, it depends on the change. If it's a really drastic change, then it's like, ah, I'm extremely upset. I'll just say I feel a bit anxious. Next. How many questions are there? On the weekends, I like to go to parties. I do, but then the other weekends, I'm like, I want to stay home. Go to a party, I'm hosting the party, hell no. I'm probably staying home. Oliver, go lay down. Did someone say party? No. Hey, I'm Tom. Oh, <laughs> I thought it said, hey, I'm Tom. It says, hey, I'm torn. Go lay down, Oliver. I'd probably go out. Why would I leave my house when I have Netflix? Uh, I'd say I'd probably go out. Yeah, that's what I'll say. I find it easy to write stories. I, okay, I don't like putting this out there that much, but I, I'm always writing. Uh, but I don't like to tell people I'm writing, you know. I do. I absolutely do. I'm currently writing, and I have been writing since high school. I always have something I'm writing, uh, books specifically. So yes, I'm going to say yes. I love doing this. Uh, how often are you lost in thought? All the fucking time. All the time. Absolutely. Even in, even in school, I remember like, teachers trying to teach me shit unless I was actually invested in what they were saying they would start talking and almost immediately my brain would wander off to like the YouTube video I'm going to make when I go home or I'd start doodling in my notebook I would never pay attention and when I would tell myself oh okay you got to pay attention just try to pay attention I would pay attention and then immediately my mind would wander I would never pay attention. I did terrible in school because of that reason. 
I wanted to focus, I just couldn't. And when I was younger, when it was time to study for tests, I could ace the test because of the fact that I would sit down and I would memorize everything in the fucking book. I would literally reread it over and over again like someone would a script, like a TV script, and memorize it. So when it came time to do the test, I would just write down the answers that I memorized. But I didn't have a fucking clue what I was writing down. And I feel like that's a lot, that, that's how students are a lot of the time nowadays. But the weird thing is, is when I watch podcasts, whether it's a comedy podcast or like a Jordan Peterson podcast, well, Jordan Peterson's a bad example. Uh, but when it's a, a, a more serious podcast talking about a specific topic, I can focus no problem. And the reason why I say not so much Jordan Peterson is because although I love Jordan Peterson and I watch his podcasts, I find it hard to focus because he's so intellectual and I get lost in what it is that he's trying to say because I, uh, I I don't understand what he's trying to say because I'm fucking stupid all right uh, but I, I love what it, he's trying to get across and I want to understand what he's trying to say but sometimes I'm just like oh man it's too much you know um, do you like trying new activities again it's dependent um, slightly hesitant mostly stick to my neutral neutral feelings I'm not I wouldn't say I'm always excited I'm usually open I'm gonna say usually open I love small talk I hate small talk I can't stand small talk there's situations where it has to be done and I can't stand it I hate that it's a part of the world that we live in. I hate it. There's my answer right there. Look at those tits. <laughs> I'm deeply attached to numbers and letters. Not so much numbers, but letters I would say I am. I have ranked the letters in order of fave to least fave. See, that's a good answer there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with that. Because I would say that, just like we were, <laughs> the first part of this episode, I was saying how much I loved the number 94. Dude, I'm autistic. We haven't even got to the answer yet. How do you handle bright lights and loud noises? See, like, if I'm at a show, like a concert, like even, I used to go to electronic concerts or raves all the fucking time. And I loved it. But in certain scenarios, like I can't go outside in the sun without sunglasses on because I can't fucking see. And that sounds like some push pussy shit. And maybe it is. But even if it's just a slight brightness outside, like the sun's behind a cloud, I can't open my eyes. I have to squint. If I try to open my eyes, even if I'm not even in direct sunlight, my eyes immediately start watering. And maybe that's because I've just adapted myself to wear sunglasses. That might be why. But that's an example of how I can't uh, uh, fuck with light. And in terms of noise, yeah, I don't like noise. I don't like loud, excessive noise. But again, if I'm at a fucking rave, I'm fucking bumping and grinding. So occasionally bothersome. That's what I'll do. Uh, how do you approach group tasks? Uh, sometimes I'm the lead, sometimes I'm not. It depends on what it is. But I always contribute. So I would say contribute a lot. I make friends easily. Ha, huh. do I? I feel like I can. It's not, but I, no, nah, I don't know. I'd say it's like, I can always find a way to relate. Yes, that's what I'll go with. I can find a way to relate. Boom. Holy, how many, how many questions are there? Am I like close? 
All I see are ads. Oh my, what the fuck? How to play. Okay, whatever. Let's just, let's continue this. Ugh. <laughs> what the hell is that? I see patterns easily. I, yeah, I do. I do actually. Yes, I do. I love researching facts about my interests. Yeah. Yes. I'm just going to try to blast through this because I don't know how long this is. Uh, yes, I like collecting trivia. I'm sensitive to touching things. I could say that to a certain degree. Like microfiber cloths. Ugh. Although I just used it to wash my truck the other day and my computer screen. But still, I don't enjoy it. I also don't like sticky things. Yeah, no, I'll say yes. I'm soup sensitive. Uh, I'd say this often. This happens to me often, yeah. Do you make eye contact in conversation? I never used to, but I've, that's something that I've been focusing on hard, so I do do it now. But it's because, more often than not, it's because I'm forcing myself to do it. If things are too loud, I cover my ears. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but if I'm at a rave, no. Uh, I've done this a few times. Okay. Are we anywhere close to the end of this? How many minutes in are we? 38. Okay. There are foods I refuse to try. Absolutely not. Not even a little bit. This is a pet peeve of mine. I can't stand people who are not willing to try new foods. I can get it, but I hate it. And it's because it was drilled into me as a young kid. I will try everything. And I am not a picky eater. I will try everything. I don't give a fuck what it is. I will, if it's food, I'll eat it. I'll put it in my mouth and I rarely won't finish it. There's things that I won't like and I won't finish, but for the most part, I will always finish it. I can't even think of a food that I don't like. I will always, there are foods I refuse to try. No, no way, no way. I love all food or no way, YOLO. Uh, I'm just gonna say I love all food. I'm a good mediator, yeah, I guess. Uh, I have been a few times. I like to think I could smooth things over. That's a good answer. How do you handle feedback? I'm used to be bad at it, better at it now because I understand it's important. Uh, I try my hardest not to take it personally. I would say usually take it well. That's what I'll say. If interrupted, I can easily return to what I was doing. Yep. Yep, I can. I can do this most of the time. Next. Is it difficult for you to articulate your thoughts and feelings? Yeah. Yes. Big time. Big time. Uh, do you prefer writing and texting over speaking? I do. I do. But I, uh, I understand how important it is to communicate physically to a person. I prefer writing and texting because speaking tends to give me a lot of anxiety. I prefer writing and texting as it allows me more time to properly express myself. Uh, I'll say... Uh, I mean, this... It does give me anxiety, but if it needs to be done... Oliver, go lay down. Go lay down. Ah, uh, you just got home after a date. How do you feel? Well, it depends on the date. If it was a bad date, then I don't feel good. But I think overall, I would feel great because I accomplished something. Uh, I'd say, yeah, things went well, I hope. Maybe that's what I'll say. This is taking a lot longer than I thought. Do you feel like people often misunderstand you? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. All the time. 
I'd say all the time. Do you struggle with completing multiple tasks in a day? No. Nope. Not really. Sometimes. I'll say sometimes. Man, what is with these tits all over the place here? Would you say holding down a job is difficult for you? Nope. Not at all. Not at all. Do you often feel fatigued? No. Rarely. Which of these activities sound preferable? All right, let's see. Going to the beach with a couple of friends? Eh. Coloring book at night? Nah. Playing a video game or working on an art project? Yeah. Alone. That's a key factor. Going to a concert or a party? I mean, yeah, I'm going to one at the end of this month. Going outside, but somewhere quiet and fairly secluded. That's a great one, too. Meditating by myself, that's also a good one. I'm going to go with C. Uh, playing a video game or working on an art project alone at home. That sounds great. Someone's calling you. What do you do? Freak the fuck out. I hate... I, uh, I don't like calls. Obviously, I'll answer them if I need to. Depending on who it is, I'll answer. That's a good answer. I'll answer if I'm not busy, but I'd rather not talk to anyone. Will the caller hang up ASAP? Check the caller ID and decide. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, check the caller ID and decide. Do you feel like you often offend people unintentionally? Sometimes. Sometimes. Absolutely, sometimes. I feel like we could be doing this test for days. Do you consider yourself gullible? Mm, I'm pretty skeptical and question everything. Uh, how are your decision-making skills? I'd say they're actually pretty good. Uh, I struggle with this. Nope. I am in. Nope. Depends on the situation. They're great. I have no. I make informed decisions after careful consideration. Yes. Do you feel like you don't understand most people and the mechanics of society? Um, I don't, I don't know. One sec. I gotta, one sec. After these messages, we'll be right back. Our first sponsor of the day is Dr. Crotch. Dr. Crotch is a low performance, unnatural product that is 98% unnatural. And there's so many harmful ingredients. You want to look, feel, and smell like ball fungus? Dr. Crotch is here to help. Dr. Crotch is so harmful and disgusting with so many terrible smells. Right now, Dr. Crotch is offering our listeners a huge savings. All new customers will get three free bars of soap. Plus, free shipping with any purchase of three bars. Just go to drcrotch.com slash gizmo to receive this buy three, get three offer. That's D-R-C-R-O-T-C-H dot com slash gizmo to buy these three soaps and get three free. It's time to get all the daily routine essentials you'll need to start feeling like shit and smelling like a dirty asshole today. <sighs> cut that out, cut that out. Do you feel like you don't understand most people in the mechanics of society? I don't fucking know. Not really. I understand but I feel disconnected. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'll go with that one. How do you feel about routines? Love them. I think they're great. Routines are helpful. I hate them. I need them. I like, ah, uh, I would say I prefer a routine. How many more questions are there? You're having a chaotic day. How do you handle it? I uh, cry in my bathtub. I get very anxious, but I think I can manage. Yeah. I do not thrive in chaos, although I wish I did. Terrible. I feel incredibly overstimulated, and I'm not sure how I can handle it. That used to be me. I need to find moments of zen. I do my best to get through it. 
I'm going to go with I get very anxious, but I think I can manage. Oh, Lee. Do you feel like you have to wear a mask in order for, oh, in order for people to accept you? Not a COVID mask. I was about to flip my shit. <laughs> Do you feel like you have to wear a mask in order for others to accept you? Um, yeah, I guess. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm working on being more authentic. Great. I'm glad that answer's there. Can you perform tasks quickly? Yep, I can. Uh, uh, I can, but if there's a lot going on at once. Yeah, maybe that one. Whoops, ah, shit, I think I clicked the wrong one. Whatever. Are you very sensitive to smells? I guess. Some smells trigger things. Sometimes, depending on the smell. How many more questions are we going to do here, huh? I would like to get back into what else I want to do. Do you feel alone even around other people? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Sometimes. Hey, do you tend to hyperfixate on people or other things? Or th uh, oh, oh. hyperfixate? Um, sometimes, I guess. Oh, here we go. And my answer is, you may be on the spectrum. You have some mild symptoms of autism and can consult your physician. Click here for some products. What the fuck is this? What is this? Sensory compression vest? What the heck? Is this what we're putting on children nowadays? What is this? Sensory compression vest. Provides deep pressure to the body, helps focus and reduce response to stimuli, helps maintain comfortable body temperature. Huh. Ah. Yeah. Look at this guy. This guy's loving it. I'm loving it. Oh, very nice. Wait, this kid looks like he's his head's photoshopped onto his body. Look at him. Look at him just smiling. Yeah, okay. I don't need one of those. So I guess the answer is uh, maybe. <laughs> I, you know what? I might be on the spectrum, but I... Uh, I um I've I'm I'm taking myself out of it because I'm trying to fit into society. I'm trying to fit into society. You know, when you're when you're at work anywhere, you know, I've worked in different environments, places where people are very extroverted. You have to adapt to those situations and adapt to the world around you. So yes, maybe you are autistic and you have these symptoms, but it's like if you just feed into them and let them take control of you, then uh, it's going to make your life miserable. So maybe that's why so many people are just simply autistic today is because the, the, they're being told to just be like, yeah, you have this stuff, so let's allow you to, to, to live in that world, but we'll just give you like headphones and weighted vests and uh, coddle you. And then uh, instead of actually just showing you how to combat those issues, you know? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But it's just like... If we just keep feeding into this... Uh, into this uh, idea I feel like it's, it's just going to make them worse you know because maybe everyone is on the spectrum maybe the spectrum doesn't even exist and it's just something we've created to uh, allow ourselves to accept these symptoms you know because like I said maybe everyone is a little autistic or they, everyone has all these symptoms but we've just we've grown up in an environment where we've had to learn 
to adapt and overcome? I don't know. Because as we were doing that test, I could relate to all that shit. But some of the answers I I uh, chose differently because I've learned to overcome it. You know, yeah, I'm sensitive to certain sounds, but you deal with it. Yeah, I'm sensitive to light, but I deal with it. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm uncomfortable in group scenarios, but you deal with it because that's just how life is. Oopa loopa body ass bitch! We're getting real serious here. Let's fucking spice it up a bit. Oh yeah, I gotta refresh. Hold on. Hold on to your jimmies. Whoa, 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 He says when he flushes upstairs, it comes out of this bathroom sink. Okay, yep, it does. Okay, I got it. I see it, yep. I see it, I see it. You don't You don't need any more. No more. No more. No more flushing. Ew. Fucking turd just came up. You see that? That's good. Okay, I saw enough. And he flushed again. Oh. No, that's it. No more. No more. No more. Oh. Oh, yeah, I see it. Jeez Louise. Okay, poo poo. Do you see the poop that came out of there? Do I gotta censor that? The poo poo. You flush the toilet and shit comes out of your sink. Ew, dude. Ew, dude. And look at the first. Look how look how shitty that that sink is. Just Oliver. Stop sneaking away. Go lay down. I will let you out later. Go lay down. He's a little sneaky boy. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, maybe he's got a pee. Maybe he's got a poo. He was just outside. Go lay down. I can't even say the word. For like an hour. He's got free, full, full, full free range of the backyard. It's all fenced in. He had plenty of time to poo and whatnot. Lay down. You lay down. Lay down, I said. But he... He just, he wants to go enjoy the sun. And I get it, all right? He doesn't have autism. He likes going outside. But I'm in the middle of something here. If I let him out now, he's going to bark at something. And then I'm going to have to go let him back in. Or he'll be out there for 15 minutes and want to come back in. I get it, Oliver. It's springtime. You want to enjoy the sun, all right? Just give me a minute, would you? Give me a minute. <sighs> We are, we are, we are the youth of the nation. This is something crazy. This is fucking, this is insane, this video. I don't know what this guy's doing, if he's hunting. Maybe he's hunting for this animal that you're about to see. But my God, is it crazy. Check this shit out. Oh my God, dude, look. Oh, hi, yeah, yeah, dude. Could you imagine? Like, okay, here's what I want. Let's watch it again. Like they're there. Like you don't see what happens before this second, but look. This guy's he's looking in this crevasse. So I don't know if he's like purposely trying to go after this fucking cougar. But it just fucking, like, that cougar, or whatever the fuck it is, it's a cougar, it could have just jumped onto him and fucking ate him right there. He's got a gun. He's got a gun, but look at that fucking thing. Let's watch it again. Oh, my. Wow. Wow. Dude, I'd be shitting my fucking pants if that thing came at me like that. I really want some context to this. Let me see what the con con comments have to say. Mountain lion zoomies. Who shoot it? It looks like the shot was a tranquilizer dart. You can see it on his back. Huh. Is it? Hmm. So I wonder, they, they, they had to have been after that cat for some reason. Maybe they were tranquilizing it to move it somewhere else. Who knows? But the, like, come on, man. Cornering it like that? 
It's fucking wild. Rogan's got to see this. Rogan would love this. This is right up Rogan's arsehole. Oh. Um. It's so it's the holidays, or not the holidays, but it is a holiday uh, known as Easter. And um, it's Easter. It's Easter. Everybody knows it's Easter. Okay, guys, let's do some dancing. Let's show me my moves. What's up with Easter? I remember. I remember. I remember when Easter was in April. Why is it in March all the time now? You know, we've got St. Patty's Day. Oliver, you lay down. You lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Hey, go lay down. You got St. Patty's Day. <laughs> you got St. Patty's Day. You've got. Well, I guess just Easter. <laughs> um. But yeah, why? Put it back in April, man. Put it back in April. I don't want Easter in March anymore. But anyway, so you got Easter Friday, then you got the Saturday, the Sunday, and then Easter Monday. Fucking four days of uh, bunny rabbits and chocolate and eggs. But anyway, during this time, because it's not a, a, a particularly major holiday... Everyone gets involved. People have, uh, you know, they go over to family and have Easter dinner or whatever. But even if you're not religious, you still do it. It's just a thing. But what happens is people will forget that stores are open. Or closed, I mean. They'll forget that stores are closed because it's a holiday. It happens all the time. And I love it. Oh, I love it. I just love it. That's another pet peeve of mine. When people aren't aware, you know? They're just going, they're just, because I'm constantly like pre-planning and planning what's going on in my life. I make sure I don't do something unless I know it's going to work out. You know, things can happen that can fuck up your plans, but at least you're prepared for it to go smoothly. So like even in a work, the work environment that I'm in, when it's time to close the building, You'll see people come up to the building and they're like, let me in. Like they're trying, they're trying to open the door. You could see the shadow of them trying to open the door and they're like, what the hell? And it's like, come on, man. You know the hours. The hours are written on the door and they won't even look at the hours on the door. They'll be like, let me in, let me in. And then they'll walk away and then they'll come back another uh, 15 minutes later, 10, 5 minutes later, try to do it again, and they still don't look at the hours on the door. It's like, hello? The door's not going to magically open. And I'm talking about scenarios where the store closes and you're doing the cash out and you, you can just watch people trying to open the door. And it's like, bro, well, either look at the times on the door and realize the fucking store's closed or give, give the store a call, or maybe give it a Google, okay? How about Google to see if the store's open or closed, all right? Especially if it's on a fucking holiday. The amount of people that forget that stores are closed on holidays is insane, all right? And so this is a great example of this. People going, actually, let's just watch it. I love this video and this girl has the best view of what's going on and if I was in her position I would be doing the exact same thing that she's doing right now and I'd be loving every second of it. This is better than any TV show. My favorite thing to do when it's the holiday is watch all the cars go, <laughs> go into Costco expecting it to be open and then watching them do the walk of shame <laughs> turn around. Oh. It's great. Look at them. Look, they're all Look at them all. And this goes on all day. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, man. Yep. Bye. See ya. Fuck it, idiots. The next batch. Is about to go the to next batch. <laughs> Look at them all. all go in. There's so many of them. <laughs>
And then they all, <laughs> they all have to turn around. Oh, and idiots, it's just, like, think dude. about, like, how far these people probably would have Yes. To go. Like, why wouldn't you call for <laughs> Yes! <laughs> this is a big one. Wow. Dude, I would sit there all day and just with a fucking, with a coffee and a fucking, and a dab pen and just fucking... Oh, it'd be great entertainment. Because, yes, yeah, she made a good point. Uh, like, especially a place like Costco in a big city. Imagine how long it takes you to get there with traffic and maybe you live far away as well. So you, you're like, okay, we're going to go to Costco today. We're, <laughs> we're not working today. We have the day off, so let's go to Costco. Get some grocery shopping done. And then you get there and you're like, oh, fuck, it's closed. Like, come on. Do you not think? And it's crazy the amount of people that do it, too. But then at the same time, you're like, well, yeah, I get it. You forget, you know? And it's like, if I forget, then other people will forget. But it's seeing it in the context of just like car after car after car uh, showing up. Realizing it's closed and then turning around and going home. It's like, come on. Come on, people. Really? Really? I am, I am very weak right now because I've had two cups of coffee and a, uh, a nicotine pouch. And it's 1.12 in the afternoon. That's all I've had. So I'm a little jittery. And uh, my stomach is like... Put some food in me! But I don't want to. Fuck you, stomach. You can't tell me what to do. I'm going to starve myself. It's my new thing. My new thing is to starve myself. I saw this on Twitter. I got to stop calling it Twitter. It's X. It says, which console introduced you to gaming? Oh. See, at first, my answer was number 14. That spe even that specific Xbox controller? Oh. Oh. Dude. Everyone hated that Xbox controller, but I loved it. I thought it was... I thought it was great. Everyone's like, oh, it's too big and bulky. Nah. I'll take that Xbox controller over the original, original Xbox controller. Even though they're both great, that one was better. Uh, but that actually didn't introduce me. Where are you going? Oliver, just, just lay down, would you? Please? Just give me like 10 more minutes, tops. But what really introduced me to gaming was actually number 20. The NES. I had an NES before anything. Even though I was born in 94, uh, my first console was an NES. Paperboy. Fucking love Paperboy. And then in grade one, I believe, my mother bought me Number 19 here, the N64. Oh, loved it. Which I might start streaming N64 games. I think that'd be really fun. And then I also had a Super Nintendo, number 16. But then I had a, I had a, oh, trying to remember. I guess I would have had the Super Nintendo before the N64. Maybe. Or maybe I had them at the same time. I don't remember. Never had a GameCube. Did always want one. But I remember going to my friend's house. And he had an Xbox. Like the original Xbox. And just firstly, like the visual look of it. Like black with the green circle with the X. I was like, this is so fucking cool. This is the coolest console ever. And so I had to get one. And I would say the original Xbox is like the, defi the, the defining console of my childhood. That and N64, I love them both. Uh, but that controller specifically. Did you hate it? This num number 14 here. Did you hate it or did you love it? Because that's not, that's not like... That's not the original, original Xbox original controller. That was one of the other ones. They had two styles. There was this one and then a different one. 
But I, I loved that big bulky thing. Not only did it look cool, I just liked it. I liked holding it. I thought it felt perfect. Everything about it was great. But anyway, you read the comments of these. And it's like children saying like number 11 was their first. So it's like the Wii U or sorry, the Wii itself was their first or the Wii U even. And it's like, holy, you guys are young. If that was your first introduction to gaming, you guys never even got to experience any of this. PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2. I mean, if you if your first console was number 18 here, then you're really old. I don't even know what that is. What is that Atari or something? Probably. Uh, what is this? I don't even know what this is. But yeah, I think we got a couple more videos to watch and then we can end this. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I'm not even going to watch this one. We'll end off with this one here. Uh, just a, a good old funny clip. Hold on, what's his name? I got to refresh first, actually. Uh, so there, you've probably seen these videos on the talk. Uh, Patty Mayo, fucking weird name, but I guess he's uh, like a bounty hunter. Uh, he's like the new dog, the bounty hunter, but like more of a fucking weak pussy. I shouldn't say that. I don't know him that well, but he, like when you watch his clips of him and his fellow bounty hunters try to take down a suspect. When they're breaking down the door and talking to the suspect, they're just like, it's like, what are you doing? You guys aren't showing any sort of dominance over the situation. They're barely effective. But anyway, this is a clip from his show or whatever the fuck it is. And it's just, it's fucking great. Uh, we don't really need the guitar. I wish I could find the original without the guitar. But uh, whatever, we'll just watch it. It adds to it, I guess. I should shout this guy out. Who is he? Chris Robinson Music. I gotta start doing that. I'm just stealing people's content. Anyway. Yeah, in the bed of the truck with some uh, beer cans. Let's, uh, let's pop out with these guys and uh, see what they got going on. Copy that. I hope this doesn't get copyright claimed. No. Hey, tell them to hang out real quick. <laughs> he just lays. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Home now. I'm six uh, feet from the edge, and I'm thinking. <laughs> I love how he just lays back. He grabs the fucking the part of the tailgate, <laughs> and they just take off. Oh my god! And uh, see what they got going on. Copy that. God, he's a big boy. Look at those tits. No. Hey, tell him to hang out real quick. Tell him to hang out real quick. <laughs> 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 He just lays back! <laughs> okay. okay. The other guy's running! Like, what the fuck, man? Hold me now! <laughs> oh, man. Wow. You would think that truck wouldn't have spun out as much as it did with all that weight in the back. <laughs> Oh, fuck. That was good. You guys got any <laughs> bags of bird ham in here? <laughs> we ran out of bird ham. Yeah. What do you think? Successful episode or what? I'm freezing cold right now. Because I am so hungry. I am so hungry. Hungry nerve. I'm so fucking hungry. <laughs> Let's just one more time. Just one more time. And then we'll end it. 
Yeah, in the bed of the truck with some uh, beer cans. Let's, uh, let's pop out with these guys and uh, see what they got going on. Copy that. Hey, tell them to hang out real quick. <laughs> oh, brother. Okay. 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 It's just running like. Wow. How are these guys uh, not laughing? I don't even want to ask what that was. <laughs> I didn't even realize. I don't even want to ask what that was. <laughs> oh man, I gotta find the full version of that because I need to see the aftermath. I hope this video doesn't get claimed. Like three of the last podcasts I did got claimed because I'm I stupidly don't realize that there's copyrighted music in it. It's fine. It's okay to get claimed. I just I don't need any more strikes on my channel. I think I have two already. If I get one more, I'm done. And if I lose this channel. It will devastate me. Really, because this cha I've had this channel since 2009. I've been on YouTube since 2005, as you know. I've been down that road many times. Lost two channels already, but those were really early on. Before any of this shit was even a thing. Um, but yeah. But speaking of channels getting taken down, or videos, Channel 5 News, you know, formerly All Gas No Breaks, just put up a video or doc that he made about the tunnel people in Las Vegas and I watched it and it was it was it's excellent just like all this stuff is is great uh, but the day after it got taken off of YouTube because Fox News uh, I don't know they put some sort of claim in and they didn't just put a copyright claim in they removed the video <coughs> They removed the documentary from YouTube entirely, um, which I don't even know how they managed to do that, but they, they're they not allowed to do that, and I'm pretty sure, uh, what's his name, Callahan, what's his name, Andrew, from Channel 5, is uh, probably going to take him to court, because it was like a four second clip of from Fox News, which is completely uh, fair use. If it's in a, if it's in a, if it's, if it's commentary or a, a documentary style uh, video, whatever, I don't know. It's completely fair use and they took it down. So I'm glad I got to see it before it got taken down. Although it is on his Patreon, but I'm not subscribed to his Patreon. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just glad I watched it. Anyway, uh, that's it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Uh, then unsubscribe, dislike, leave a nasty comment. I say this every time. Eventually it's going to bite me in the ass because people are going <laughs> to actually listen to that and do it. I don't give a fuck what you want to do. I don't even like saying it. I might stop saying it. You know, if you're gonna, if you like the content, you'll subscribe. If not, then why am I telling you to do it? That's not what this is about. It's about just doing it for the love of podcasts. Because as I said earlier, you know I love podcasts. I'm obsessed with them, and I can't imagine a future where I'm not doing podcasts. So anyway, that's it for this episode. Bye. <laughs>